you may have noticed when you've been using your calculators in the past, there are three buttons that we haven't used yet. This sign, cosine, C-O-S, and tangent button. That's what we're going to talk about in this unit. Those are called trigonometric functions. Trigonometry is the branch of math that is concerned with relationships between angles and side lengths of a triangle in particular. Right triangles is what we are going to talk about. Now, in short, what it's saying is that every single triangle, every triangle that has two angles that are congruent, are similar by AA. So this little triangle with its 37 and degree and 90 degree angle, and this big triangle that has a 37 degree and 90 degree angle, they are similar to each other. And what happens is we want to know what there's, how are they similar? Well, what we're going to be studying in this unit is, say for instance, this side length divided by that side length in this big triangle is the same as that, those two same side lengths on the smaller triangle. And in fact, it is, let me make sure I'm in the right mode on my calculator, um, that ratio, not even knowing the side lengths, that ratio is 0.6018. Somebody's already done all the work for us and has figured out, regardless of what the side lengths are, these two sides will always have that ratio. And then other sides will have similar same ratios. Okay, so that's what we're going to be learning about. That's where we're ultimately going. These are scale factors, right? This is going to be our scale factor that takes us from one um, side to another that helps us to find the missing pieces. Ultimately, what we're looking for in the past, when we had two sides of a triangle, say that's three, that's four, we were able to use Pythagorean theorem to find the other one. Just recently, we added 30, 60, 90 triangles, and we were able to find that if this side was five, then the long side, the long leg was five root three, and the hypotenuse was 10, or 45, 45, 90 triangles. So we've learned those two. Now, this is going to break it open for us and allow us to find missing side lengths and missing angles for any triangle that we have one of those pieces of information for. So we're going to start really basic. How do we just decide what trig function, which button on the calculator, sine, cosine, or tangent, do we want to use? And it all comes down to the sides and their relationship with the angles. We want the side that's opposite of theta, we want the side that is adjacent to theta, and we want the hypotenuse. Those are the three sides of the triangle. And they are always placed relative to this angle. Now, the hypotenuse is always the hypotenuse. It doesn't matter where that angle is. It is always the hypotenuse. So if we look in this situation right here, the side that is opposite of theta, opposite is across from it, that would be side BC. The side that is adjacent to it, adjacent means side by side, and that would be this one, AC, side AC. And then we have the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is always the hypotenuse, and it is always located on the other side opposite of the right angle. The right angle kind of points at it, that little right angle symbol in the corner. So our hypotenuse is AB. So a couple of things to note. The hypotenuse is also adjacent to that angle theta. That variable right there is theta. We use Greek alphabet letters to denote angles. Um, so it is also adjacent. But more than it is adjacent, it is hypotenuse. Hypotenuse always wins over adjacent when it's being named. So the hypotenuse is always the hypotenuse. The adjacent is the other side that is touching and forming the angle in question. Okay, so let's look at this other triangle now. Let's look at the complement of our original angle. We've got our theta up here. Opposite of theta now is AC. AC was adjacent to theta before, now it's opposite. Okay, <clears throat> I find it's easiest to find the hypotenuse first. I didn't that time, but it's easiest to find the hypotenuse. There's your hypotenuse, it's AB. Notice it never changes, it doesn't matter what happens to theta, it's always relative to the right angle. And then adjacent is your left over side that is touching or forming the angle, which is BC. 
So notice these two sides are dependent upon where the angle is, but the hypotenuse is always dependent on where the right angle is. So often it is easiest to find the hypotenuse first. And so the, what we want to do is we want to get in the habit of labeling these. Until we get good at seeing them, we want to label them. So we're going to label the sides of our triangle with O for opposite, A for adjacent, and H for the hypotenuse with respect to the marked angle. Now, here's what I like to do. Start with the hypotenuse. Okay, so here is my angle. Find your right angle. My right angle is right here on these two sides, and so my hypotenuse is that third side. Okay, from there, I would go opposite. Opposite is across from it, across from the angle. So if you put your hand on the angle, it's the th that third side. So that would be my opposite, and that would leave this side to be my adjacent side. You're going to get a lot of practice with this. Okay, again, here is my angle. This is my hypotenuse because it is always across from my right angle. Find your right angle, and then that third side's your hypotenuse. Your opposite is the one that is across from, right? If you put your finger on the angle, then it's the third side that's not being touched. And then your adjacent angle, or your adjacent side, excuse me, is the side that's touching the angle that is not the hypotenuse, okay? So the first thing you want to do is you always just want to get really good at recognizing where the opposite, the adjacent, and the hypotenuse are. Because those three trig functions, sine, cosine, and tangent, have to do with those. So let's specify which one specifically. Sine, or S-I-N, on the key, on the calculator, compares the opposite side with the hypotenuse. Okay? Cosine, or COS, compares the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. And then tangent compares the opposite and adjacent. So where did I get this point 6018? Well, all I did is I came over here and I said this side was opposite and this side was hypotenuse of 37. So I said, well, the sine of 37 is 0 0.6018. And so that's where it comes from. So every triangle, the opposite side divided, that's a 37 degree angle, that opposite side of the 37 and the hypotenuse are always going to have that 0.6018 ratio. That's what's going to happen, okay? So those are the functions that we're going to learn and memorize. Now we have a trick um, of how to remember them. If you go way back and ask your parents, they'll probably remember so ka toa. S stands for sine, opposite, and hypotenuse. C stands for cosine, adjacent, and hypotenuse. And tangent, T is for tangent, opposite, and adjacent. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to look at the angle that we have and the sides that are related to it, and we are going to decide which trig function would we use in this situation. My angle here is at 51 degrees. Okay, label first your O, your A, and your H, your opposite adjacent hypotenuse. So 16 is my hypotenuse. And then the X to the 51 degrees, that is my adjacent. You can go ahead and label the O, it's easy to find. But what we need to use is we would use A and H because those are the two sides that have measurements or values on them. So A and H. Well, A and H, adjacent and hypotenuse, is cosine. So in this function, and to find these, this answer, those missing sides, we would use the cosine function. Okay, um, let's look at this one. We have our 56. 56, go ahead and locate your hypotenuse then find your opposite and your adjacent. So X is on the opposite side, and 25 is on the adjacent side. We are going to use the two that have markings on them, A and O. So so, ka, toa, the one that uses A and O at the same time is T, that's tangent. Okay, then we have this number five, 38 degree angle, again, Figure out where your sides are relative to that angle. The hypotenuse is always the longest side of the triangle across from the 90 degrees. X is opposite, which means this side is adjacent. 
the ones I care about, opposite and hypotenuse. So I got so, ha, toa. O and H are the ones I want to use. So that would be the sine function on the calculator. Okay. Now we're not going to worry about like the angle doesn't have to be um, a number, but this is the angle um, x. You can use theta. You can use any any variable you want. But from this angle, this is my hypotenuse that takes it out of the running, so we don't use it accidentally. Eight is opposite, and seventeen is adjacent. So in order to find that angle measure, I would need to use O and A with SOHCAHTOA. That would be O and A. That would be tangent. So I would use the tangent function to find that missing angle. Here's my 50 degree angle. My Y is on the hypotenuse. My 12 is on the opposite side. This adjacent side I don't need, but I'd just be in the habit of marking them all until you get used to it. We're going to use O and H. That's so, sine, O and H would be sine, so that's the S-I-N. I know it looks like sin, but it's sine, right? That's the S-I-N is just short for sine. And then 56, 16 is your hypotenuse. Y is your adjacent, because there's your opposite way over there. A and H, C-A-H, that's cosine, so we would use the cosine function to find those missing pieces, okay? So what we're setting up for is being able to find this missing side and this missing angle. Ultimately, this is our goal, to be able to solve these problems. And to be able to solve them, we have to get really good at recognizing, are we using sine, that's opposite and hypotenuse, cosine, adjacent and hypotenuse, or tangent, which is opposite and adjacent.